Yesterday, BlissOS developer brings Android 12L to x86 PCs, which means now you can able to install full-fledged latest Android 12L or some people call it Android 13 on your devices. Well, now the question is, is it good for you? And does it have a Play Store? And well, can you able to game on it? Let's find out all the answers in this video. So without a further ado, let's get started. So as this is the first Android 12 beta release that people can run on their machines, I'm surely expecting some bugs and bunnies to eat my carrot. So before grabbing up your ISO copies, make sure to watch this video till the end. Now apart from the usual new features of Android 12 l this release includes a desktop mode launcher as an alternative to quick step launcher which should be more suitable to use with your keyboard and mouse. The Play Store and other Google services are pre-installed into the build. So there is no need to flash separate gapps package. Now the first thing I have done is downloaded the ISO image and make a bootable USB using a Rufus tool. Here I selected GPT partition file system in order for Grub to install properly. Installation is quite simple and fast. As you can see into the time lapse, it booted up without any hitch on my Intel Pentium laptop. But when I tried installing it on my Ryzen 3 2200G, it failed and stuck onto detecting Android x86 error. So therefore I kept my Ryzen aside. Now once you are booted up, you have an option to choose from these two launchers. You can go for quick step or you can go for smart dock. To use smart dock, you will have to allow and grant some permission but after that it is done. And oh my god, this thing has got a chromos like start menu and a full fledged taskbar. Well looks like android is heading towards a really good direction which is PC market. Talking about the UI, it really feels like it is properly designed for PCs. Truly you can understand what L means in Android 12L. All the UI elements seems quite large and clearly they are taking a good advantage of such a huge screen real estate. Switching between windows is quite fluid. I tried dragging a window to the sides but it didn't snap just like the windows. If you open up any of the application from taskbar, you get a really fluid beautiful animation. Here I noticed a quite a weird effect. You can see in the taskbar. The app icons are constantly switching back and forth when I click onto them. Honestly, I can't wrap my head around what this thing is. Looks like whichever app is in focus, app icon for that stays in the first position. At least in my opinion, the app icon should stay in its place. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And here is your notification panel. You can see the notifications are quite big. Using the UI for the few minutes, I can see it's not uh, fluid as you might think. There are some glitches here and there. And like sometimes I can't even able to collapse the notifications. That's weird. Talking about the elements on the taskbar, there is a pin icon, Wi-Fi, sounds option. Here, let me show you the sounds panel. So going into the volumes, you can control sounds like this. Into the three dots, settings. You can see usual Android sound settings. You can pick each and individual volume controls. Talking about the power options, here you got emergency, power off, restart and also sleep option. And upon testing the sleep option, it clearly worked flawlessly. But uh, since I'm recording this video, uh, for some reason, after waking up my system, it didn't start it recording. So that might be a recorder issue or maybe related to the OS. Talking about the gaming, I installed Subway Surfers to test it. And since I'm running it onto my laptop, I'm expecting some decent performance. It's not running on VM, but sadly, uh, Subway Surfer didn't work for me. Talking about other apps, YouTube app did work out flawlessly and video playback was quite fluid as well. But sadly, it is not outputting any sort of audio. Many times, you will accidentally pull the status bar and you will have to deal with this kind of situations. Talking about gaming, don't expect any of the game to work flawlessly out of the box at this point of time. The games I tested didn't even started. Other than that, going into the settings, into the display settings, you can even pump up the font size. I found stock font settings are quite large, so I turned down a little bit. In conclusion, UI really feels like it's properly designed for the PCs. And nobody said Android 12 L was only designed for tablets and foldable. And after installing this build, 
we got a clear idea what Android 12 on PC could look like. The changes made between the original Android 12 release and Android 12 are fairly localized. And if you are familiar with how Android 12 looks on tablets and foldable, it looks nearly identical. The two column layout is most noticeable on the lock screen and notification shade. Almost everything other than that looks like unstable and unfinished. I do not recommend installing this release on your PCs unless if you wanted to get your hands dirty on a virtual machine or something like that. Feel free to check out some important links in the description below. Make sure to hit that like, share this video, subscribe to our channel and this is Kedar from How to Guys signing out.